we obtained independence in 1965. At that time, the situation of the country was in a very, very difficult state. You know, we have very high employment, literacy rate was very low, and there was a lot of social uh, difficulties that the government had to face. So therefore, in the first phase of the education, uh, starting from 1965 to 1979, uh, the emphasis of the government was literally to uh, um, uh, build the knowledge and skills among the population so that they are employable. A at least they are able to find a simple job where they can work. And so therefore, the emphasis of that stage was literally on language literacy as well as numeracy. In the late 70s into the 80s, there was a tremendous, what you call, spurt of economic uh, 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 progress. You know, with many of the multinationals coming to set base in Singapore in the area of uh, manufacturing, in the area of other area, uh, 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 production. So as an outcome, these MNCs will require manpower to support those activities. So we move the education from survival driven to efficiency, whereby our students now are not just given the basic uh, foundation, but we provided with opportunities for vocational and technical education that will really equip them with the skills and knowledge that can support the industries that are now based in Singapore. Reaching the middle of the 90s, we also noticed that the world has changed. The world has moved from an industrial-based economy to a knowledge-based economy. Now, in a knowledge-based economy, there is a need of a different type of assets, that attributes that we want to see in our students. And the attributes are literally whatever knowledge and ability they have, those are become asset if they can translate this into applications. So therefore, beginning in 1997, we move from efficiency-driven education to ability-driven education. Now, in the ability-driven education, the ability of every child, you know, there may be difference in terms of abilities of different child, but every child, we want to unleash the ability. So we have changed the mode of our curriculum as well as the way we teach the children so that they can then, you know, express their ability. So we have gone through different phases and the need to go through this is that the system, the education system itself is responsive to external development so that the students who go through our education in the different phases will meet the needs of the new landscape. So we are now in the 21st century. The challenges of the 21st century are literally the uncertainties and how the landscape is going to evolve. A very simple example is if your child enters the school today, he or she will graduate in 20 years' time. Now, what will be the landscape in 20 years' time is up to anybody's guess. Because if you compare today back to 19, the mid-1990s, the many jobs that are in today's landscape were not found in 1990s. So what kind of new jobs that will be created in, say, 20 years' time is difficult to forecast. So the challenge now is how do we educate our children and prepare them with the necessary foundation that will enable them to cope with new landscapes? So thus, in Singapore, we identify four attributes of students uh, which we think will enable them to focus well in this landscape of change. And the four attributes are 
that a child should be a confident person, should be a self-directed learner, should be an active contributor, and should be a concerned citizen. So if we can build these attributes in the child, we believe that when he mature and grows up in 20 years' time, he will have the attribute to uh, what you call meet the demands of that new landscape. You know? We hope that the child will be a lifelong learner so that he can you know, learn and learn and relearn new knowledge and new skills to meet that demands of the new landscape, which will ever be changing. <music>